Hey, when are you leaving? Like my husband asks me loudly as I pack, trying to rush me. Sure, I'm the only one being kicked out of this house, but it's not like I'm going on a trip. It's not that easy to pack everything. He knows that. Mike is being mean on purpose. He probably hopes I'll break down and beg to stay so he can laugh at me. <sighs> What a terrible person! He doesn't work, spends all our money, and is lazy at home, but puts on a good face outside. He can't stop paying for his junior colleagues or women he likes. Thanks to my income and savings, he could afford to be generous to others, and now he's trying to kick me out. <laughs> What a jerk! His mother is just as bad, always asking me for money. Neither of them ever helped with our daughter, yet they suddenly became obsessed with the idea of taking custody. Despite my concerns, I decided to leave temporarily to prepare for the situation. As I opened the door to leave, I couldn't help but think, "How dare they!" After begging me for money to buy cigarettes, I had already made my plans with my daughter Sarah. I had no intention of handing over custody to Mike. Mike's affair was almost certain by this point. Little did I know that even bigger problems were waiting for me. My name is Mia, and I used to live with my husband Mike and my daughter Sarah. Now things are different. I want to sort out my thoughts about how a simple argument between us turned into this mess. Why did things go so wrong between me and Mike? And why did his parents get involved and make everything worse? When I was in middle school, my parents divorced. My father was always busy with work. He even worked on Sundays, which was supposed to be his day off, and often came home very late. My mother reached her limit and started working multiple part-time jobs to support us. At first, she said it was for the family, but eventually, she couldn't hold back her complaints. Your father is never home. I wonder if it's really just work. He could be cheating. No one works this late into the night. I never found out if my father was actually cheating, but I later learned that he was indeed a workaholic. Looking back, I think my parents were just too young and couldn't manage their stress properly. In the end, no one was really at fault, but they grew apart, and the divorce was the result. After the divorce, their relationship became much calmer than ever before. I lived with my mother, and she remarried a few years later. But she always made sure I could see my father regularly. I've heard of other kids in similar situations being told by their mothers that their fathers didn't want to see them. Some fathers even refused to pay child support and run away. I was lucky, and I'm grateful to both. My parents for always being there for me, and of course, I'm grateful to my stepfather who accepted me as his own. When my mom remarried, she explained my real father's job to me in more detail. My father is the CEO of a major corporation with many subsidiaries. The foundation was built by my grandfather, and my father inherited both a vast fortune and great responsibility. Looking back, it's no surprise that he was so busy. My mother eventually realized that she had been wrong to doubt my father's commitment. I'm sorry I never explained everything properly, but I had always suspected that my father was someone important—the pocket money, the fancy meals, and the way he spared no expense to entertain me gave it away. When I once told him that he didn't need to go all out, he smiled sadly and said, <laughs> "You're so kind, Mia, but let me do this. I wasn't able to be much of a father to you when you were little." Though my father spoiled me, I could never fully explain it to my mother. Every time I mentioned the gifts or money he gave me, she would just nod with a knowing look. My father never remarried and didn't have any other children. I always thought it was because he had no one else to spoil but me. But where there's wealth, there's greed. My father had to fight to protect his fortune from those who wanted a piece of it. I loved my father, but when I got married, my stepfather attended the wedding instead. My father didn't attend, but sent a huge sum of money as a gift. Your new husband is your family now. I don't want to interfere. I'll support you from the shadows. He often said that he didn't want to be in the way. By the way, don't tell anyone about me. I haven't done anything wrong, but people with money attract enemies. It's just part of the job. My father warned me to keep his identity a secret from Mike and his family. He said that people tend to reveal their true selves when large sums of money are involved. People lie, deceive, and hurt others to get rich quickly. Even close relatives can turn against each other when it comes to inheritance. My brothers fought over our father's estate. That's just human nature. But your mother was different. She always wanted a peaceful family and time together more than anything else. I regret not giving her that. My mother found the family peace she wanted through remarriage. 
and my father understood that money couldn't buy everything. Although they had once been in love, things didn't work out between them. My father's stories about money troubles taught me to be cautious, so I followed his advice and kept his identity a secret from Mike and his parents. Mike is kind, and I thought he would be fine even if he knew. I trusted that his parents were good people too. Sadly, I was wrong. I didn't realize that Mike's kindness was just a facade. He was generous to others, but he did it for his own ego. When Mike was hospitalized after a car incident, none of his colleagues came to visit. It was clear then that people only stuck around him for what he could give them. Mike wasn't particularly diligent at work either. He often took time off after drinking and showed up late. Despite his flaws, he still wanted to look good to others, especially to younger colleagues. He started asking me for money. I began to realize that I was trapped in a cycle and I couldn't get out. If it weren't for Sarah, I might have filed for divorce already. Seeing Sarah's innocent sleeping face made it hard to make any decisions. And then there was Mike's mother. She seemed kind at first, but I soon realized she was just like her son. She spent beyond her means to show off to others, then asked me for money when she ran out. It didn't take long for her to start coming to me for cash when Mike couldn't help her. I was just a regular employee earning about three thousand dollars a month. My financial plans were based on both of us working, so I never imagined I'd have to support two adults. I had been saving the money my father gave me for Sarah's education and future, so I wasn't about to touch that. There was no way I'd give that money to lazy people like Mike and his mother. Mike was frustrated, though. You work at a good company, but your salary isn't much, huh? You should try harder and make more money. If I made enough, you wouldn't have to worry about it. But I have expenses that women don't have to deal with. What do you mean women don't have to deal with? Women always get treated by men, don't they? They just have to smile and act cute. And who's treating these women? Mike was complaining about women getting treated by older men, but he was no different. I hated how Mike looked down on women. My only solace was Sarah. She was a gentle and kind daughter, just as her name suggested. She was also stubborn in a good way. Once she made a decision, she stuck to it. Middle school, she was in the home economics club and brought home cute sweets she made. But in high school, she joined the badminton team and became more athletic. Thanks to my father's support, I didn't have to worry about Sarah's future. All I had to do was focus on my job and avoid Mike and his mother as much as possible. Sarah's badminton team was going to the state tournament, and I was excited to cheer her on. Mike tried to get out of it, saying he wanted to sleep in on his day off, but I wasn't having it. You're always sleeping, even when it's not your day off. You've never gone to one of Sarah's games. She's about to retire, you know. Mike reluctantly came along after hearing that Sarah was upset he hadn't watched her play. Even though he wasn't very involved in parenting, I thought he cared about Sarah at least a little, or at least I hoped he did. As we watched Sarah play, Mike nudged me and whispered, "Who's that old guy? He's cheering like crazy." I looked over and saw an older gentleman in a sharp suit shouting encouragement. He seemed vaguely familiar. "Looks like a rich old guy." Why did everything sound so crass when Mike talked about money? I ignored him and went back to cheering for Sarah. Sarah's team lost in the second round, but I was proud of her for playing so hard. I cheered so loudly that Sarah might complain later. Mike seemed unimpressed, and I wondered why he didn't share my enthusiasm. That old guy's crying, just like you. I turned and saw the old man wiping his eyes with a handkerchief. Suddenly, I realized who he was. Mia, is that you? It was my real father. Of all places, I never expected him to come to a state badminton tournament. I've been here the whole time cheering her on. It was such a great game. I cried. Some parents nearby smiled warmly at him. Clearly moved by his enthusiasm, Mia, who's that? Mike finally noticed something was off, and I realized I had a problem. I had never told Mike about my real father. Seeing Mike there made me regret bringing him along that day. My father quickly understood the situation and introduced himself to Mike. Oh, you must be Mia's husband. I'm her biological father. I've been divorced from her mother for over twenty years, so I don't have much involvement in their lives. Mike didn't seem to fully grasp what was going on, but I was fine with that. The less he understood, the better. After my father left, I tried to distract Mike by talking about Sarah's gain. I didn't want him to dwell on the fact that my father was rich. That guy had a nice suit. He looked like he might be loaded. I felt a wave of irritation rising from deep inside. You should be more careful with your assumptions as you get older. 
I tried to deflect his comment, but I couldn't help worrying about one thing, my surname. After the divorce, my mother kept my father's surname, so mine wouldn't change when I was in middle school. When she remarried, my stepfather graciously agreed to use her maiden name. So, the surname Mike knew me by was the same as my father's. I hoped he wouldn't get curious and start digging into it, but of course, that hope didn't last long. Hey Mia, I looked into your father. He's a famous CEO, huh? Why didn't you tell me? The fact that Mike did research on my father, which was so out of character for him, confirmed my worst fears. I can't believe you kept that a secret. I heard he inherited a huge fortune from his father. It's not like he just inherited the money. He worked hard to grow the company even more. I hated how Mike talked about my father's success as if it was undeserved. Yes, my father inherited a fortune from my grandfather, but he didn't slack off. He worked hard to maintain the legacy and grow the business. He didn't neglect his family because he wanted to, but because of the responsibility he had to his employees and their families. I respected both my parents and didn't hold a grudge against either of them. They both tried their best in their own ways. My father was even featured in business magazines for his achievements, but he was also honest about his struggles. He once told me that dealing with real estate gave him the most headaches. You never know how much you'll get for a property until you actually sell it. It's unpredictable. He said real estate was one of the most sought-after assets, but the value could fluctuate depending on the market and timing. That unpredictability is why he had to set up a separate company to manage the properties he inherited. He hired family members as executives, allowing them to receive salaries and benefits. Despite all his efforts, some relatives were still dissatisfied. I could already tell Mike was the type to cause trouble if he got wind of my inheritance. So you're going to inherit a share of your dad's fortune, right? He's still alive. Why are you even thinking about that? You never know what could happen. He doesn't have any other kids, right? Mike's greedy expression made me sick. You're being really disrespectful. You should focus on managing your own finances better. Oh, come on. It's not like he'll run out of money. How much of his estate do you think you'll get? Oh, stop it. Even if I do inherit something, it's mine, not yours. When I shut him down, Mike's face twisted in frustration. You don't even have a lot going for you, yet you're so greedy. The irony of that statement was almost laughable. I didn't say anything, but I was already certain of one thing. If something happened to my father, Mike would try to get his hands on the money any way he could. I had been saving money for Sarah, but I also wanted to think about my own retirement. Mike wasn't interested in planning for our future together. He just wanted money to spend now. Lately, I had noticed frequent messages from different women on Mike's phone. He was treating these women to dinners and taxis, all on his meager salary. No wonder he was always running out of money. It was clear that Mike had become involved with at least one of these women. He kept asking me about my father, hoping to meet him and probably ask for money. When's the next time you'll see your dad? Can I come with you? The fact that he was so shameless about it made it unbearable. My father had money, sure, but that didn't mean Mike deserved any of it. Mike didn't want help because he was in need. He just wanted more money to waste. To make things worse, Mike's mother, Terry, started calling me clearly after the same thing. I heard from Mike that you have a biological father. Is it true that he's a big company CEO? Her interest in my father was obvious. I felt sick, realizing that this must be what my father had dealt with for years. So you'll inherit everything, right? Your mom doesn't get anything because of the divorce, does she? I closed my eyes tightly, trying to block out her creedy words. My mom is happy now. You don't need to feel sorry for her. Even though I knew she wouldn't understand, I couldn't help but defend my mother. She then bombarded me with questions about my father's estate, her greed growing more apparent with each word. Your father's name is Mr. James, right? Is he still running the company? Every hair on my body stood on end at her invasive questions. I'm not sure. I've been busy with work. I bet he has at least one mistress. CEOs always do, don't they? What a disgusting thing to say. Even if he did, it was none of her business. Does he have any secret children? Enough! My father isn't the person you're imagining. My anger was met with her mocking laughter. <laughs> oh, come on, I was just asking. Why are you so defensive? <laughs> she laughed again and brushed off my anger, but I knew her game. So, no secret kids? That means you're the sole heir, right? My heart sank. I realized at that moment that both Terry and Mike saw me as nothing more than a ticket to wealth. I was being hunted for my inheritance. 
They had probably figured out that as my father's only child, I would inherit everything. Their plan was to manipulate me into giving them access to the money. There was no way I'd let that happen, but I wasn't sure how to protect myself from their greed. What if Mike quits his job and forced his mother to move in with us? I couldn't support them all on my salary and savings. Mike had told me that his father was already on the verge of divorcing his mother. What if he decided to go after my father's money too? Just as I thought things couldn't get worse, my mother-in-law said something that shook me to my core. If anything happens to you, Mia, like an accident or illness, Sarah will be the sole heir, right? I gasped audibly, shocked by her words. I'm not going anywhere, so you can stop worrying about that. My voice trembled as I forced myself to stay calm. Terry just laughed. Oh no, that's not what I meant. But you know, if something were to happen, Sarah would inherit everything. The thought of them using Sarah to get the money made my stomach turn. After that phone call, the comments from Mike and his mother became more direct. Your cooking isn't very exciting. Can't you make something more interesting? The women at work are much better cooks. They even offer to make me lunch. I tried to ignore the constant criticism, but it became harder to stay calm. I've been thinking about taking a leave of absence. If you made more money, I wouldn't have to worry. He was always taking days off regularly, so what was the difference? His mother even started coming over unannounced, adding to my stress. Mia, I hate to say this, but you're really not cut out to be a wife. I could feel Sarah watching everything unfold. Mom, are you okay? Dad and Grandma are acting really weird. I'm sorry you had to see that. I think they're after the inheritance from my real father. I finally told Sarah everything about my real father, his wealth, and why Mike and his mother were acting the way they were. I knew something was off. You've always had enough money to let me take lessons and buy nice things. That's because your other grandfather has been giving me money for you. I get it now. My other grandpa is nice, but he never seemed rich. I realized that Sarah had noticed the strange situation long before I told her. But why would Dad and Grandma try to push you out? If you're the one inheriting the money, they should want you to stay, right? I knew the answer to that question, but I was afraid to say it out loud. They were hoping to break me down so I'd give up my rights and leave, handing everything over to Sarah. It was heartbreaking to realize that the man I married wanted me gone. As long as I'm alive, I'll inherit the estate, but they're counting on me leaving so the inheritance passes to you. I don't want that. I can't manage all that money on my own. Exactly. They want you to be overwhelmed so they can take it all for themselves. After that conversation, Sarah understood the situation. I decided that if Mike's abuse continued, I'd leave. I didn't want to put Sarah in the middle of it all, but I needed her to stay behind and watch how things played out. Where will you go? I'll rent a short-term apartment nearby and look for a new place. Don't worry, I'll be close and I'll come back for you. I reassured Sarah, though I suspected Mike and his mother would quickly show their true colors. Soon after, Mike's verbal abuse escalated. You just want all the money for yourself, don't you, you selfish woman? The insults flew at me like boomerangs, but I didn't respond. I let him dig his own hole. How can you be so selfish when Sarah needs money for school and her future? Sarah's education and future were already secure, thanks to my father. You should give your inheritance to Sarah and get out. Finally, Mike revealed his true intentions. I had been waiting for this moment. It was time to make my move. I winked at Sarah, who was secretly watching from the hallway and quietly started packing. A few days later, Mike shouted at me again. When are you leaving? Just make sure to sign over your rights to Sarah's inheritance before you go. Then we can get divorced. I grabbed my suitcase and left, leaving behind the life I had once tried to build. I moved into a nearby short-term apartment, close enough for Sarah to visit on foot. The first person I called was my father. I needed to tell him everything. A month later, Mike called me in a panic. By then, I had already saved his contact as Happy Idiot, and seeing his name pop up on my screen made me smile. I ignored his call at first, but he kept calling late into the night. I finally picked up to avoid losing sleep. You tricked me! It's the middle of the night, Mike. Couldn't you be a bit more polite? You didn't answer because you were avoiding me. You kicked me out. We're not together anymore. I don't have to take your calls. Mike seemed genuinely shocked by my calm response. Never mind that. A lawyer hired by your dad came to the house. Oh, my dad's lawyer? Don't owe me. He said I forced you out and tried to take Sarah away from you. That's exactly what happened, but Mike was clearly panicking. Well, it's all true. 
Mike's frustration was obvious, and his voice grew louder. You set this up, didn't you? It's not my fault you got caught. I calmly reminded him that I had evidence of everything. I recorded your conversations with your mom. You what? Who's the sneaky one here trying to steal someone's inheritance? I didn't hold back anymore. My voice was cold and harsh as I confronted him. Forget that. Your dad's lawyer said you're getting an advance on your inheritance. That's right. How can you be okay with that? Mike couldn't comprehend why I would donate most of my inheritance to charity. It's better than letting money ruin my life. Years ago, I had decided with my father that we would use part of the inheritance to support underprivileged children around the world. Sarah and I had more than enough to live comfortably, and I wanted to avoid attracting people who were only interested in money. I'm not interested in being surrounded by people who only care about money. I had already come to terms with my decision, and I didn't care what Mike thought. Mike, on the other hand, was furious. You're just upset because you can't wait. You even reached out to my dad, didn't you? You tried to act concerned and offered to help manage the estate, but it was all about the money. My father had already seen through Mike's charade. He had hired a lawyer and even a private investigator to help me gather evidence of Mike's affair. I have plenty of evidence of your cheating, by the way. What? How did you find out? Let's just say I had help. The private investigator had provided plenty of photos, making Mike's affair plainly clear. It was obvious that Mike. Didn't have any real relationships, just shallow connections based on money. Now that I was out of the picture, Mike would likely try to use Sarah to get what he wanted. But Sarah was no fool, and neither was I. You were planning to use Sarah as leverage, weren't you? That's not true. Really? Then I guess you'll have no problem in the divorce court. Mike went silent. If he cared about Sarah at all, he wouldn't have been so quiet. He wasn't thinking about her future. He just wanted the money. You are going to have to raise Sarah on your own now. Think you can handle that? I can't. I don't know what to say to her. So you don't really care about her? If she doesn't come with the inheritance, I don't need her. Just as I expected, Mike didn't care about Sarah at all. At that moment, Sarah grabbed the phone from me. We don't need you either. You're not my dad. Sarah had been listening to the entire conversation. I felt guilty for getting her involved, but she was strong. You don't need to apologize, Mom. I felt bad for dragging her into this, but she smiled and reassured me. You might not be great at picking men, but if you hadn't married Dad, I wouldn't be here. She hugged me, and I felt a wave of relief wash over me. We were about to start a new chapter together. After that, Sarah and I moved into our new place. We began our life together, just the two of us. A few weeks later, I got a call from my father. Mike came to me begging for mercy. He said to tell you to stop with a divorce settlement and not ask for alimony. My father had given Mike a harsh lecture. He can't just erase his affair and how he threw you out, and the fact that he treated Sarah like a bargaining chip is something I'll never forgive. If it hadn't been for my father's help, I might have crumbled under the pressure. Hiring a private investigator, paying for lawyers—it all would have been too much for me to handle alone. But in the end, everything worked out the way it should. Mike was already under scrutiny at work for his poor performance. When the company found out about his affair and misuse of company funds, he was fired before my father could take any action. After his termination, Mike tried to call me countless times, but I had blocked his number. I had no interest in what he had to say anymore. His father, on the other hand, had always been disgusted by Mike and his mother's greed. After learning about her affair, he finally decided to divorce her. Just like Mike, she had been unfaithful for years. Not long after the divorce, Mike's father remarried someone new. In the end, they were all just selfish people who couldn't control their greed. It's true, money changes people. The allure of wealth is undeniable, and I understand why people get drawn in. But I firmly believe that nothing good comes from taking what you didn't earn. People work hard for their money, and it's through that effort that they can enjoy the rewards. It's the cycle of hard work and giving back that makes life meaningful. That's the lesson I want Sarah to carry with her through life. I want her to understand that as long as she doesn't let money control her, she'll be able to live a good, honest life, and I know she will.